Hi guys, this is Elliot. If you are a web developer, you may encounter a lot of runtime errors like this on your web browser. And if you are a robotics developer or engineer, whatever that is, you may encounter runtime error like this. Yeah, it's time to debug, right? If you're using Pixoak, like this, and how do you debug it? So we're going to talk about how you can debug it, and then there are three methods to debug this. So let's dive into it today. All right, before beginning, if you are not familiar with this kind of uh, embedded system device, this is a flight controller for a robotic system. It actually started from the drone flight controller, but nowadays it's expanded a lot. It, it is used a lot for uh, unmanned vehicles, unmanned underwater vehicles, unmanned ground vehicles, and so on. This is the flight controller. And as you can see, I'm using one of the smaller version from Holy Bro. Holy Bro is the name of the manufacturer of this device like this. Now they have different versions from different manufacturers like this kind of thing, a little larger one or the real old one uh, look like this. But anyway, today we are going to focus on the Holy Bro version Pixel 4 Mini. This is the open source, so if you want to see internal code, you can always go to their git and then you can see this code like this and then it means you can always program this. So if you are an engineer like me, you might have, actually you must have encountered this kind of control block diagram. For example, you have a position controller, a velocity controller, and plan and the state estimator, which is the sensor fusion algorithm, and that feedback again, and so on. So if you want to implement this, your brain automatically comes up with this kind of uh, picture in your mind, like read the sensor values in the while loop, and then calculate the PID, and then convert this PID output into actual actuator PWM digital signal, and then you can feedback again. However, Pixel doesn't implement this idea of the block diagram in the traditional way. Instead, it's more like an Android app. So if you can view this position controller as a each app in the Android device, literally like this kind of apps. So each app represent position controller, velocity controller, or state estimator like this. And then each application doesn't have any idea about the other applications like velocity controller or state estimator, then how do they actually accomplish this, say, attitude control? It's just because they blindly expect the messages are coming from different nodes. For example, position controller will blindly publish out the set point for the velocity controller, while it doesn't care about the existence of other applications. So how do they do that? Well, it's just like an ROS. It subscribes to messages and publishes the messages. And it's called distributed computing. So you, as a developer, you need to be able to debug. And then Android comes with debugging shell called ADB, Android Debug Bridge. And then the Pixel comes with a similar console terminal to do the exact same thing. So let's talk about that right now. So the very first method that you can use is to use this ground control software like Arduino Pilot, and I am using QGround Control. So let me go over to Analyze Tools, and then there is Mavlink Console, and if you type Listener, Sensor Combined, then you can actually print one sensor message at this time. And this is based on QGround Control. Now, if you want to change the parameter, you can go back and then navigate to vehicle setup and go to parameters. And then you can find one parameter that you want to change and then do it. And this is totally fine. But if you are a developer, you don't want to do this all the time. This is a little cumbersome. Instead of doing this, you can use console terminal. The second method is more developer way. So go to my blog here. Then I uploaded this uh, code for Docker Compose. And what I would do is just copy paste into a new environment like this and then run this Docker. And then I'm going to attach my Visual Studio code into this Docker container. Then this is the uh, Visual Studio code inside this Docker container. And then if you don't have this folder, just try to run this bash file. That's it, I didn't do anything instead of just running this bash file, which is just literally downloading this git repo of the PX4 autopilot. And I'll just get into this folder inside of this PX4 pilot folder. I'll just copy and paste this. And then voila, this is a non X shell. And I can actually do the same. Um, listener, sensor combined, 
then this uh, value will come out. Imagine here, these messages are the backbone of this communication. For example, the state estimator is publishing these kind of messages. And that's why uh, these messages are critical if you're uh, developing a position controller. If something doesn't work, then you can always come back to this NSH and then type it. And if you want to see in a continuous manner, you can use this type of argument like listener says a combined dash n. If I type 10, it's going to print out 10 messages, recent 10 messages. And then if you want to print out for like 10 hertz or 5 hertz, it will print these mes messages five times per second. Now, if you want to see the parameter like this, param show CBRK USB check. So when this USB check parameter is checking whether the USB is connected or not. If the USB is connected like this, then the, this device will reject to fly. But if you are developing autonomous vehicle, then you might want to this USB connected to your onboard computer like ROS, Raspberry Pi to control and then receive messages back and forth. Then you do want to uncheck this, disable this policy. So to do so, let's see. Parallel show CBRK underscore USB underscore CHK. That is by default zero. It means it will check this condition. To disable this USB connection check, you can literally set the parameter like this. And then I'll type 197848. Then this parameter is changed like this. So let me check this. So the parameter value is 197848, which means uh, it will ignore to check whether the USB is connected or not when you try to arm this device. So you don't really have to navigate back and forth if you're using QGC, right? You can actually do everything all at once. And then if you want to toggle the module, uh, work queue is the name of the module. I'll type work queue status, and then you can actually see the status of the work queue. Then these are the work queue that is going on. So for example, multi-copter rate control, which is the one of the controller is running at 800 Hertz. That's how you can monitor what's going on inside of this device. Now, the real problem is this. If you are developing an autonomous vehicle, you might have your Pixel attached by USB like this, and then this USB is attached to your onboard computer. It could be QGC, it could be ROS 1 or 2, and whatever that is, this main USB is occupied by the Mavlink, or if it is RS2, it's occupied by micro XRC DDS. So you can debug with this channel. It's just impossible. If you actually go to their website, they sell this kind of device, which is debug adapter. It's about 20 bucks. And in reality, it looks like this. I have a radio attached to it, and then it looks like this. And then this is the debugger, and the debugger is just simply connected to another USB port of this computer. And then all I did is just connecting the wires. So let me turn off this. And then actually you don't even need any Docker container, no nothing. I'll just turn on my terminal. Then what I'm going to do is typing this. I'm going to use Ficacom like this, and then it's the same. Listener. Listener vehicle. That was no, vehicle attitude, we'll get add, attitude. So that's my attitude messages coming out from this. So this shell, this purple default Ubuntu shell is going through this guy, debug adapter. And all I did is just connecting like this uh, next to this debug, and that's the USB, and that's the debug port, and that's all. And you can do the exact same thing so that's the three methods. First, either you use this open source ground controller like RD Pilot or QGround Control, or you can use console terminal like this. Third, you can also use debug adapter, which I recommend because by watching this video, probably you must be an autonomous drone or robotics developer in general, and probably you're also using ROS. And using ROS, this main channel is occupied by the communication between uh, ROS and this device, and that you need this debugger. And that's the third method. 
that's it for today. So if you have any other questions about debugging Pixel device, please comment down below. And if you think this video is helpful, please like and subscribe. This is Elliot. I'll see you soon.